Hello, I'm Will with Will's Reviews, and today I want to tell you about what I consider to be the essential knives in the kitchen. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm new to YouTube videos, so hopefully the content that I share with you will outweigh the lack of production skills that I have. So thank you in advance for your patience. Um, as I thought about doing a video on kitchen knives, I was reminded of a book that I read about 10 years ago. It's called An Edge in the Kitchen by Chad Ward. It's an excellent resource. It goes into every aspect of everything you can think of involving kitchen knives. So if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. He makes the case that you really only need three knives in the kitchen. Um, and thinking back over the 10 years since I've read that book, I think he's probably right. He talks about a chef's knife, a serrated bread knife, and a paring knife. So I thought I would go through those with you and tell you how I use them and what my thoughts are. So starting with the chef's knife, this is just the classic chef knife. I think this is a 10 inch blade made by Gerber. It was a gift 25 years ago and it's still a great knife. Um, I used to do all of my big jobs and a lot of the small jobs with it. I've since gone to another knife that I'll show you in a minute but where I still use this is if I'm chopping up meat or vegetables into small pieces. You know that rolling action you can get with the shape of this blade. It's just really nice for big jobs like that. So highly recommend a good quality. Actually in any of these knives you don't have to spend a fortune but you probably ought to go or start with a mid-range knife. I suspect this knife today would be a hundred to hundred and twenty five dollars. Um, but well worth the investment Again, if you take care of these knives, they'll last you for the rest of your life. The knife that I've used instead of this one is this knife right here. It's called a santoku. Santoku is a Japanese word. San means three. Supposedly there are three virtues of this knife that make it excellent for you know, slicing, dicing, and chopping. I like it because it fits my hand well. It's still a big enough blade for jobs of all sizes. You can crush garlic with it. Um, I've been very, very pleased with this knife. This particular one is a Masserin. It's made in Italy. Um, I started out with a Santoku made by um, Victorinox. This knife is about $50 and the Victorinox I think is about $40. But um, great knives and just incredibly useful in the kitchen. This is his second recommendation, the serrated bread knife. Um, what they're great at is if you've ever tried to cut a loaf of bread with this or this, you know, you end up crushing it first and then you slice it. Where knives with these serrations just kind of grab what you're cutting and make the job much cleaner and better. I use serrated knives for bread, um, tomatoes, lemons and limes, things that you need to kind of grab as you slice through them. Having said that, I'll tell you that this knife has been in my drawer for years and I never use it. The knife I use instead is a small version of the same thing. Um, I don't cut any huge pieces of bread that I need that extra length and this is just one of my favorites so I think this one is made by Victorinox as well probably about a fifteen dollar knife you know they, they give you a good blade and an inexpensive handle that's all you need the next knife on his list was a good paring knife paring knives are nice because of the control that you have for small jobs. Um, I use this knife a lot. I think this is a German knife. I think it's a Wusthof. It's not labeled. I paid about $50 for it you know, 10 years ago, so I don't know what they cost now. But 
a wonderful knife. So the three knives in my kitchen, Santoku, small serrated, and a good paring knife. Keep in mind that everybody's different um, and has different preferences. This is my wife's favorite knife. It's a nice knife, but I never use it. She likes it because it fits her hand better than these guys. She likes the blade shape. She likes the control that she has. Um, so just kind of keep in mind that, that different people like different things. That is another reason I think you can go back to a Santoku instead of the classic chef's knife. There are a lot of women that I know that just think this is this is too big of a knife in their hands and they prefer something this size. Next in my essential tools in the kitchen are shears. And shears are just basically heavy duty scissors. Um, this is the one that gets used the most at our house and it, it does a great job. I'm a hunter and a fisherman, so there are lots of times that I need something that's a little bit heavier duty. This will cut through bone and just anything else you need. So again, you probably only need one of these, and it just depends on what your uses are. The next thing I was going to talk to you about is storing your knives. Please, please don't throw all of your nice knives in a drawer and let them bang around with each other. It'll just hurts the blades. Um, I've got a block that I use and then also I've got a magnetic strip that holds these large knives on a post in my kitchen. But it keeps them safe and it also protects them from banging up against other things. Having said that, when I look at this block I'm reminding of all of the knife sets that you can buy where a, a company sells you a chef's knife and a this and this all in one set you can spend your money better it's like any combo you know the rod and reel combos or the, the rifle and scope combos you know one of the components is really good and the other two or three you're probably not very good so buy individual knives you want to stick with the same company that's fine if not um, it really doesn't matter so but again store your knives well. In that same vein, I don't have to sharpen my knives a lot. You know, I've got sharpeners. There are lots of great articles, um, videos about sharpening knives. It's, instead, I use a steel to keep the edges good and sharp so that they don't get dull and then have to be resharpened. So a steel is another essential part of your, of your knife's tools. Um, again, this is the classic steel that everyone's seen the chef in the restaurant use. This is in my knife drawer. I can't tell you when I used it last. Instead, a few years ago I found a better mousetrap. I believe this is made by Edge Maker. It's essentially a small steel. It's got a, an aggressive side to it and then a normal side. You put it on a countertop and just drag this through it. I use this on an as-needed basis and you know I may sharpen knives once a year and then it's just an individual knife. So uh, this is about $15, easy to find online. Again, highly recommend. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about is I take knives with me when I travel. And I know that sounds a little weird, but um, how many times have you gone to a vacation rental house, beautiful view of the mountains, the lake, the beach, whatever, dinner time comes around, you start to prepare dinner, and the knives that they give you there are just terrible. Um, they make protective covers for these that would allow me to take my own personal knives or my regular kitchen knives Instead, I've just gone with knives that have an indestructible sheath that I can throw in our luggage. These are made by Mora, M-O-R-A. They're very inexpensive and they're great value. 
I believe this one is carbon steel. This one is um, stainless steel. They hold an edge. They're easy to clean. You know, I, I highly recommend them. And you know, once you take knives with you on vacation, it doesn't seem weird anymore. I think that's it. So thank you for your time. I hope you found this valuable. Um, if you did, please subscribe and also leave me your comments. Again, I'm new to YouTube and I'd, I'd appreciate your feedback. So thank you very much. Goodbye.